welcome to another episode of Don't Call It Small. I'm your host, Natasha Foreman. If you don't know me and you have no clue what this podcast is all about, let me share a bit. I'm a lead management consultant at Foreman and Associates LLC, where we provide consulting and professional development services. And Don't Call It Small is where we talk all things business, share tips and news that you can use, and highlight the people and ideas behind the products and services that we buy. To learn more about our team, please visit foremanllc.com. That's F-O-R-E-M-A-N-L-L-C.com. Hey, everyone. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Uh, it's good to be here with all of you. This is episode 74. We're going to be talking about sharing and oversharing in the workplace. Yeah. Let's start off with a quote. And actually, it's a line from a movie. It's um, from The Social Network. And it's <laughs> it really it really aligns with today's topic. Um, and the, here's, here it goes. As if every thought that tumbles through your head is so clever, it would be a crime for it not to be shared. The internet's not written in pencil mark, it's written in ink. Yeah, that's how it is when we just put everything and just vomit everything out on social media and different online forums and ah, yes. But let's let's see where we do it a lot and and we don't realize that it has the same impact and um, sometimes we can have the negative consequences come to us much sooner. <laughs> the workplace. Let's talk about the workplace. Oh, we've all done it. And you have to admit, I've done it. You've done it. We have all uh, <laughs> had that moment of. Like, what in the world was I thinking? Um, and you end up sharing something and you have that foot in the mouth uh, situation. Yeah, we've done it. Uh, I've done it on this podcast. And I'm like, oops. <laughs> I forget I'm not up here just talking to one of my, my pals. But we tend to spend more time at work with our colleagues and at home with our family. So if you think about it, 8, 10, 12, 16 plus hours can be spent with you know, folks that aren't related. I, you know, I, as I, I said, non-related beings in the world called J-O-B. Uh, you probably only see and actively engage with your household members for two to six hours in a given day. The rest of your day is spent eating, sleeping, and doing whatever you do in the restroom. Like, you know, you could be bathing, shaving, praying. Some of y'all are getting all, you know, glammed up. Or you could be hiding in there. And don't act like some of you. <laughs> don't try to lock yourselves in the bathroom to hide and pretend like you aren't in there. So, you know, I get it. You're away from from home eight to 16 plus hours. You spend how, you know, two to six hours, maybe, maybe with family. The rest of your time is you're sleeping and doing this, whatever you're hiding away doing in the bathroom. And the natural inclination, of course, for us is to share, to commune, connect, to bond with others. You know, we are social beings. We're social creatures. And the more time you spend with people, the more you share and the more you learn about them and they learn about you. Um, and you start to grow comfortable around them. And in many instances, they are your extended, you know, morphed family, your work family. And friendships grow and blossom and oftentimes from planted seeds nurtured in the workplace, these gardens that we call offices and cubicles and conference rooms and break rooms. And, and I get it. Um, you know, some of the friends that I've had have come from um, the workplace. I have, I have friends that were, I, I met through my mom's, you know, place of employment and I, I get it. You know, we, we, we form that, but we have to still remind ourselves that when we're in our place of employment, there are boundaries or there should be, right? And, and what you say, what I say to our friends, our personal private friends that we, you know, we grew up with, we went to, you know, school with, that isn't always appropriate for the workplace. What you would share in the confidence, of, you know, of, with, with, your, with your bestie isn't necessarily something that you need to be sharing with your workplace comrade. 
I mean, you can share stuff at the barbershop and in the beauty salon and the nail salon that you should not be sharing in the workplace. And those blurred lines are getting folks caught up in some crazy webs that are making it very difficult to untangle or we just get discarded, right? We're terminated from our jobs because of it. Social media is making it worse, right? It's adding fuel to a barbecue pit that doesn't need anyone fanning those flames. And many companies haven't addressed with great detail the sharing of information on social media. So you know they haven't addressed what's shared in general, you know, conversations in the workplace. They'll focus on intellectual property and ensuring that information is not shared publicly by employees and um, employers and managers should be mindful, though, of addressing what topics and contextual details should be limited or completely off limits at work. There has to be an, a major, uh, you know, um, look and addressing of these things. Because if someone violates it and you're like, it's not in writing, it's not in, it's not, it has not been written, it's not been shared, then it's not a violation. I mean, it, it's a violation of common sense, but it's not a violation of any written policy. And, you know, as we shared in the previous episodes about um, those in, workplace inconsistencies and the things that you need to have, those are the things you need to have. You need to make sure that you have that addressed, right? I think I did that in episode um, 69. Let me flip and see. Um, oh, 67. Episode 67. You know, talked about those workplace inconsistencies. The the policies and, and something like this specifically should be addressed in writing. Needs to be shared broadly and frequently throughout the year, every year, right? Um, and really quick, because I know that there's always someone. It never fails. It's like... You know, we've got people that troll certain topics. I'm going to address First Amendment rights. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in the context and history and the whole nine. We're going to wrap this up in a nice bow. So let's address this now because there are folks who just don't seem to understand what these rights mean and how they're applied and and how your place of employment is exempt. I mean, just in many ways, depending on where you work, unless it's the federal government, state government, it's exempt. So really quick, First Amendment employment and First Amendment rights, excuse me, First Amendment rights, um, it, it protects you from censorship and silencing by the government, by your government. And and at that time, we were dealing with the federal government, right? Uh, when and if you choose to speak out about something you don't agree with politically, for instance, something that they've done, something that you don't agree with. Now, let's go back to why this amendment, because it's an amendment. It was not, it was not in a, a, the, the founding principle. <laughs> it was something that was added in. Let, let's go back into why. Let's, let's go back in time. When we, the United States, which was America at the time, when we were under British rule, we had a king. And if you spoke negatively about the king, If you refused to comply with his orders, you would be punished. That could be jail, flogging, or you could be hanged or whatever. When we declared our independence, well, let me clear that up. Well, when non-enslaved Americans declared their independence in 1776 and then fought and gained it through the Treaty of Paris in 1783. Well, they didn't fight it in the treaty, but... (laughs) and i'm gonna talk about when they fought but you have to understand that not all the leading nations recognized america's declaration when when they declared in 1776 not all these other nations recognized that it wasn't until 1781 through 1783 now the american revolution the fighting was from 1775 until 1783 we started fighting Then we declared our independence a year later, but it wasn't until 1783 when we then, you know, sat down and and had the treaty in Paris that that this was actually made so. During that revolution, though, from 1775 through 83, you still had British soldiers and officials who were still punishing regular Joe and Jane for treason against the crown, against the king for speaking their minds, for having an opinion that differed the king's. 
The First Amendment is a right granted to American citizens, but this doesn't mean we are protected from recourse and retaliation by non-government individuals and entities. You can't talk mess to a coworker or employer or somebody out in the streets and then scream First Amendment rights when they check you or when they chin check you. <laughs> the First Amendment even protects journalists, but even they can't get away with slander and libel. Those are just lawsuits waiting to happen. And we've seen this, right? If you've been paying attention to the news and you've been paying attention to what's going on, you have these different media sites that are up here putting out just blatant lies, slander, libel, just blatant. And what happens when those they face those lawsuits, they then retract and say, ah, they're not screaming First Amendment. No, 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 no. So now that we are clear on this, hopefully we're clear on this. Hopefully you can share this excerpt. If you don't share anything else, just give that little, that little snippet right there to people for First Amendment because folks have been butchering this for the longest and it is just exasperated and highlighted even more so in the last 20 years. It's just disgusting. It's just disappointing. It just, it really is. I sit back and I'm wondering what were y'all learning in school? Really? Seriously? All right. So, um, I, you know, I think this is like the third time in four seasons that I've had to address the First Amendment. I think this one is probably the most succinct and I brought in the historical context. So hopefully I've now checked all those boxes. Now let's look at TMI in the workplace. All right. So that, and, and, and now you know what you can't talk about your First Amendment rights <laughs> about. So let's look at this. Um, health problems. You or your loved ones. And and people are like, what? But I, I want you to really think about this. Limit what you share. Some people share way too much and you give too many details. There are certain things that just you don't need to go so, so detailed about. Like, you're not writing a book. This is... <laughs> this is this is not going into a uh, an academic journal of you know for the sciences. Discussing incontinence and bowel obstruction and sperm and egg count and the quality of sperm and egg and erectile dysfunction and STIs and that your boyfriend or girlfriend gave you an STI, all of those are off limits. They're all TMI. Stop. <laughs> As I said, if it's not tied to some type of academic journal entry or tied to research for an article, project, campaign you're working on, if this is not the, the core of what your the business that you're working in is focused on, stop. Zip your lips. Stop. It's not the place. Not the place. Not the place. Not the place. Not the time. Not the time. Not the place. At all. I was reading that uh, psychology today says that oversharing is often an attempt to fast track a relationship, your desire to let folks in and see you as open and honest and a straight shooter to create a bond. And I see that a lot in relationships, right? Especially when you, you first you know, start dating someone. And I've done this too, where you're like trying to be very transparent, right? And so you're like, I just want to be clear that you know, I don't have time for the games and blah, blah, blah. So you end up sharing something that in some ways may be an overshare where it's kind of a little too blatant. It's, you know, it's a little, you know, you're going beyond the clutching the pearls. You've got someone who just took off like, oh my gosh. Um, and so with that, you have to learn how to self-edit. You have to kind of think before you speak instead of we just have this, you know, this, this, this vomiting. We just kind of like, you know, it's like the exorcist, you know, when Linda Blair, Blair played the girl in the exorcist, you just kind of just blah, it's just, green pea soup all over the place just we have to just stop and so you know I just mentioned relationships let's let's look at the workplace and and how we steer clear of of exposing our personal lives and the people in it that we're supposed to protect how we can refrain from exposing them in our workplace and when you're looking at your relationships, dating, love life, marriage, your problems in those instances are TMI. Your cheating spouse and their escapades is TMI. Your deadbeat co-parent and their trifling ways is TMI. The wild kinky session you had Friday night, Saturday night, 
and Sunday night, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, all, any, at any time, it's, it's off limits. Your sexual preferences, mm, that should be a no brainer. But yet we keep hearing this in the workplace. We keep hearing people share this intimate detail, sharing about their romantic life, their intimacy with their partner. It's off limits. You are exposing your partner to people that they are not intimate with. People that they have not given you permission to share this information with. People that are literally your colleagues in the workplace. If you quit or are fired tomorrow, you probably ain't going to be kicking it with these people on the next day. You don't have them in your bedroom with you. I would hope not. So only the people that you share a bed with need to be privy to these details. When you tiptoe, belly flop, or dive into the sex waters, because that's what I'm going to call them, you are like, you know, one stroke, one cannonball, one (laughs) whatever, away from a meeting with HR or the legal department. And, and either intervention is going to take place, it's training or some other course of action, which is probably, you know, they're going to put you on, you know, suspend you or terminate you. Like, stop. It's bad enough that we share intimate details with our actual, like our friends' friends. It's, it's really, it's sad that we do. Um you know, I, I've had friends that are always looking at me like why I don't share about, you know, a significant other. It's none of your business. It's not. I'm not into, you know, any of that. So why would I share something with you as though I am? What happens in your bedroom needs to stay in your bedroom with the person that you're in the bedroom with. And however many people that is, that needs to stay between you and them, not anyone else. So... I hope I've really underlined that because I keep hearing it. And I'm like, why is this? Why? Why? And yes, I I will say this. Sometimes we have moments of vulnerability and we share that, you know, we aren't ourselves. You know, you're going through something, you're depressed, you're, you're distracted. And then you, you know, you end up blurting out. It's because you found out your spouse is cheating. You know, you're crying inside and you want to cry outward. You want, you know, you want to... You, you just want to be embraced and told that you're okay, that it'll be okay. And I get it. But you also need to remind yourself that you're at work. And sometimes those lines can be blurred and someone's good intentions can be blurred. And that's how you end up with some twistedness up in the workplace. This also happens when we talk about money in the workplace. Now, I do know that we are dealing with, and we have been dealing with since for decades, the um, the pay inequity in the workplace, pay inequity between men and women, pay inequity amongst the various ethnic groups um, within our workplaces, pay inequity. I get all the different ways. We can check all of the different demographic bar- boxes in which we are facing this. And so, yes, I understand addressing matters that way. Um, and directly with management and, you know, but let's look at the other nuances that bleed in, that flood, that suffocate, choke out, um, and cause a lot of disruption in the workplace when we're talking about merit money. Really, our focus should be this. Um, unless someone wants to know how much you paid for that new tech gadget you're proudly showing off or how much something cost at whatever store, XYZ store, you really should steer clear as much as possible from talking about money. You know, how much your mortgage is, your car payments are, that inheritance that Aunt Susie is leaving you or your spouse. Understand this. You never know who's listening, who's plotting and planning and scheming. It's just, it's it's a risky slope that you're skiing on. It is. It is. It is not everyone just because you see, you know, this isn't, this isn't preschool. Everyone's not your friend. That's my friend. That's my friend. No, not everyone's your friend. 
even people that you call your friend and it calls you a friend, they're not your friend. So stop, 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 stop. This is where we go into the other mud cesspool of politics and religion. Oh gosh. <laughs> if you can't be neutral and respectful, just leave it for after work, before work, but just not at work. People turn rabid over these two arenas. I mean, since biblical times, I mean, and before biblical times. It's, it's not going to change. It's not going to get better unless you're part of an ERG or other group that's, you know, formed to deal with and address issues and concerns and needs of workers where politics and religion need to be addressed respectfully, then just shut it down. Just don't take part in it. Just ah, when you see it's about to go into the red zone. Ah, no. I mean, heck, you can't even talk about religion around folks of your same you know, group, your same denomination. People start acting like they're like in gangs. Like, <laughs> like the visual I have is, you know, they're rolling up real slow, creeping the window down in the car. <laughs> they're yelling out the window. Yo, fool, what set you claim? I mean... <laughs> You don't know if you're going to get blasted on for saying the wrong answer. That is how people are when it comes to religion and politics. So tread lightly with these two behemoths in the workplace. Okay. Um, we, another one, which, you know, whether you're doing it directly or indirectly, um, your job hunting, if you're about to bounce from your job or you're thinking about it, the only persons who need to know this is management, primarily, right? You can tell management. Um, so you can work with them to get your replacement. Once management is clear and they're in, now it's being told with the team so that everyone's working together, that's a whole nother ball of wax, okay? Because you're all working and you're working with them because... You love that you love the t company, you love the team, everything, but you're you're leaving for whatever reason you're leaving for, for a growth development because you're, you know, moving to another state, another country, whatever. Or you're just choosing that I don't want to work anymore. But you're working with management for that. That is different because at that point you're honoring and respecting them and the relationship you have with them and then they're helping to um, you know, convey what's going to be taking place together with you. If you plan on leaving without helping in that area, you're just going to abandon ship, then keep your mouth completely shut. Don't tell a soul in your workplace. Don't, don't. You know, you're just being, you're, you're being petty. You're trying to stir up something because you already know that people don't keep secrets. People talk. You're being messy. So that also underlines and reiterates don't use your work computer to search for jobs apply to jobs to draft or edit your resume to reply to job inquiries nothing nada do that on your own time on your own devices off-site and we talked about that in episode 72 if you haven't heard episode 72 please listen to it if you know someone that needs to listen to episode 72 please send it to them it's just it's just messy messy petty childish drama stop it just <laughs> and that can lead to and that could be because of the next issue which is negative feelings about work your job management colleagues sometimes we have a tendency of letting people know that we're about to bounce because we have these negative feelings there's a saying that the one who talks about someone to you is the one who will talk about you to someone else. And we've heard it in different, you know, variations. I I, I like to think that, and, and this is why I, I like giving visualization. So the way I, I look at it is that some friends are like leaves. They blow away with a gust of wind. Okay. <laughs> They're leaves, folks. And so are some of the, many of your coworkers. They will run their mouths like a grapevine and blow from your team right over to someone else's, especially if they are in ladder climbing and title chasing mode. Just, yeah. Don't. 
they'll turn around and say, well, Natasha said, and you're like, whoa, I said that to you in confidence. Did you? <laughs> Did you? I'm not your therapist. I'm not your psychologist, your psychiatrist, your counselor. Really? Hmm. I'm not your significant other. We don't live together. They are leaves. The wind blew. They went with the wind. Just remember that. And now we're in the workplace and I've, I've already shared w one element of sharing your outside life with your in inside. Here's some other outside stuff that needs to stay outside. Keep it outside. Your after work turn ups. I've been, this is something that's all, that has baffled me. If you drink, you party, you get buck wild. No one at work needs to hear about it. No one needs to see it. It just stop. After work stuff <laughs> stays there. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. And with that, limit how much you drink at company events, you know, and during happy hour with coworkers. I just, I don't get it. Like, I just, I, it's like, whether it's free liquor or paid liquor, some folks just, it, it's, they just break the dam and all the waters flush through and they, it's just destruction just waiting to, to run them up. And I, I don't, I don't get it. Know your limits and then stay far away below those limits. Okay? Your limits, two drinks. Drink one and have two chasers of water. Water, Or better yet, just don't drink at company events. Just don't. Because see, the thing is, the moment you drop the ball on a project, a task, whatever it is, the go-to reference will be from all those that have seen you in their buck wildness, that know of your buck wildness, they will then say, hey, well, well Kevin, <laughs> did you have a little too much sippy sip last night? Or did you have a wild weekend, Jackie? We know you like to go hard in the paint over there at O'Connor's Bar. People, this has been said and done time and time again, over and over again, in different variations. And people keep doing it. No one needs to know about your extremely high tolerance or your extremely low tolerance and back and 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 now to segue to another tolerance and vice that we need to not share in the workplace if you live in a state with legalized marijuana and even if you don't please 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 don't share that you smoke it chow down on edibles or infer that you're down to be a guinea pig like The people that are like, well, I haven't done it, but I've always wondered. I've always, no, don't, don't talk about what you've always wondered. Just, just steer out, just steer yourself. Just, just, just right out. You, it, <laughs> just don't, don't. I don't care what you do in your personal life, but the only excitement and thrills that you should be sharing about your personal life. And if you want to bring any of that into the workplace, you know, share about, oh my gosh, I went to the amusement park. We were at, you know, at Disneyland or Magic Mountain or Disney World or whatever. Oh, it was so much fun. You guys should go. You should take your family. Talk about you went zip lining or, you know, you were splashing around in the ocean, the lake, pool, whatever. You know, that's the only highs that you need to be talking about you know, hiking, parachuting, mountain climbing. Talk about that high. That other high. Don't talk about it. Don't don't talk about it. And something that just came to mind, but I'm going to share it in a moment. Um, because before I do, I need to share another vice, and that's gambling. If you love to gamble, and I get it. I mean, but maybe you do know when to follow Kenny Rogers' advice. And, 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 and then there's times when you don't know when to fold, hold, walk away, or even run. Telling coworkers and clients about how much money you blew through or won, it, it, it falls back into that money TMI trap that I mentioned earlier. Just don't. You're, you're literally setting yourself up to be seen as reckless and irresponsible. And the moment you drop the ball, it's going to be tied to somehow you're distracted. People are going to wonder whether or not any type of inconsistencies in uh, you know, the, you know, the reporting, the accounting, you know, they'll start thinking, oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Uh -oh. uh oh, could he be skimming from the pot? Trust me, it has happened. It will continue to happen, especially when 
your gambling is made known. Now, I just finished talking about, you know, sharing about your amusement parks and splashing in the pool, ocean, lake. Um, I need to focus on something really quick. Something else is a, a no-no. Pictures and videos of you dressed inappropriately. I don't know why I have seen it. I don't know why other people have seen it. Why we see pictures of you wearing lingerie, thongs, wearing boxers with no shirt. Um, you know, fellas, why are you sharing with coworkers or making visible, really, anywhere, uh, where you've got your pants sagging right below that, like that, that V line where we can basically start to you know, visualize and, 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 and imagine what's below. Why? Why do we need to see pictures and videos of any of you sunbathing on the beach? Off limits for the workplace. Pictures and videos of your family life that are too intimate to share outside of family. Those are, are, are vulnerable pictures. You wouldn't share it with the masses, right? You wouldn't go in down the street and just share some to with some sh- random stranger. Like the thing is, this is that what I've I've heard so many times as you hear where parent where people are like, yeah, my my son was really upset when he found out I shared that video, or my you know my husband or my wife was really upset when you know they found out that I shared it. Yeah, because you violated them. You expose them to people that have no business seeing that part of your family, of your family life. We have to be mindful of this. Sharing too much information um, about your outside priorities is another thing um, that can be uh, a flag. And I've had people say to me, like, I don't know why they're, you know, acting this way with me. You know, I'm doing my work here. Why are they, you know, so so hell bent on, on the other work that I'm doing? It's because you overshared. You shared too much. Whether it's because you were, it was pride, you know, you're so proud of what you're doing or it was ego or you were bragging or, you know, or it's just that the love of what you do. And you're like, oh, my gosh, and I'm part of this and I'm doing this. And they're like, hmm. What happens is you cause people to think that you're not pulling your weight, that you're using company time to work on those things, or you're not putting in your best efforts because you're spending too much time giving your best to the outside work. That's what happens. Don't share. You have to be mindful of that in in, in interviews. When you're up here bragging about yourself, bragging about yourself, bragging about yourself. And yeah, of course, we're trying to, we're trying to seal the deal. We're trying to you know, get this relationship. So you, you're, you're, oh, you start overselling yourself. What the other person who's taking the information in will tend to think, well, how is it you're going to have time to give us all that we need from you? Because we need more than what we're saying. How are you going to give this to us if you're doing all that out there? So learn to self-edit. And I know someone's probably like, well, how do I know if I'm oversharing? You're oversharing anytime what you say or share, right, (laughs) can make people question your abilities and character. So whether you're saying it or whether they're seeing the, the pictures or videos of it, if it makes them question your abilities and character, you're oversharing. If you saw it from someone else, because sometimes we share things and we feel fine with it, but if we see someone else do it, we're appalled. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did. And someone's like, uh, Susan, you've done it. You do it. Sometimes we don't see the, the ways in which we violate. Um, but if, if you think about it from that context, that's how you'll know if you're oversharing. So as I've, I've said a couple of times um, today, a little self-editing can definitely go a long way. If you haven't read Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, the book, great book, by the way, in that book, he has shared some examples of what happens when you talk too much. <laughs> and basically, the more you talk, the more you increase your chances of saying something foolish. That's the reason why when I have to do my podcast ep- episodes, I have to like outline so that I stay on and then I have to catch myself when I find myself going off into a tangent because I'm like, oh, you may end up 
oversharing, Natasha. <laughs> you may end up oversharing. And it's not that you're not, it's not about not keeping it real or, or whatever, or being authentic. It's just the understanding that there's certain things that are just not appropriate for certain environments and arenas and with certain people, right? So there's this great quote that I found. I I think it's a great quote, great quote. Um, It's from Lisa Inlick Heffernan, and she's the author of Grown and Flown, and she wrote that experts say that oversharing is fueled by our insecurities, the need to compensate for deficits socially or professionally that we perceive in ourselves. We worry about what others think, try desperately to make ourselves look good, giving away far more information than we should. When it doesn't work, which of course it wouldn't, we share even more. (laughs) Whoa. I mean, so many of us have done it. We, you know, it's just like you just end up doing it. And I think it ties back to what I had stated earlier about that, that desire to bond and to um, be accepted and included, right? We kind of do that. So let's pivot. Time to pivot. It's time to do some shout outs. Yes. Let's shout out. Let's shout out some folks. I got um, three professional street companies I want to shout out. The first and foremost, you know, I got to throw some food in there. Craft by Smoke and Fire. Now, I'm now a vegetarian for the past couple of years, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> when I see the, the pictures and videos of their food, um, it's so tempting. It, it, <laughs> it hurts. It really hurts. Um, they do have things, they do have food there that I can eat, but I'm talking, I'm referring right now just to the meat. They make Texas style barbecue um, and, and they have locally sourced prime steak. Their meats are 100% halal. They have craft cocktails, live entertainment. They're in California. They're in, um, matter of fact, their main location is in Anaheim at 195 West Center Street Promenade in the city of Anaheim. They're now open in Arcadia and they're going to be coming soon to Pasadena. I need you guys to go to craftbysmokeandfire.com. I need you to look at their menu. I need you to look at the amazing crafted art that they have created. They have a short rib burrito quesadilla. They have loaded mac and cheese. They have brisket and grits. Have you ever? Have I never? But I'm almost tempted to try it. (laughs) Check out the Big Texan. It's a loaded baked potato. It is huge. It is so huge. It should be against the law. I mean, <laughs> it comes with brisket and cheese and fried onions and barbecue sauce. Mm. Mm-mm. They are open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. And Sunday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Go visit craftbysmokeandfire.com. You can find them on Instagram at craftbysmokeandfire. Oh my goodness. If you hurt yourself eating, please let me know. Just let me know. You know, tag us. Uh, <laughs> tag us on social media. Tag me. Let, let me see. I want to salivate. Oh my goodness. Absolutely amazing. Craft by Smoke and Fire. Next up, <clears throat> here is an artist who every time I see her work, I, you know, I kind of get a little teary eyed. Shannon Gordy has rough sketchings, R-U-F-F sketchings. She is a pet and wildlife portrait artist. And when I see her work, she does um, uses colored pencils and pastels. I think of my beloved dog Bishop that, you know, passed away a couple of years ago. I think of my other pets that I have loved and adored and cherished. And it's, it's just beautiful. She turns your best friend into a portrait and it is absolutely beautiful. I'm just going to quickly just share some of her prices. And of course, you know, her prices are subject to change, but just to give you a rough idea, um, like for instance, there, if you want a bust, just the bust, uh, of your pet, um, an eight by 10 could be $400, um, for instance, if you have, you know, three pets, 
then you know it's, it's recommended that you have the 16 by 20 and even a 16 by 20 can fit up to four to five pets but at that point it's just going to be the the bust only if it's the three pets it could be you know the full body and so a 16 by 20 in that framework would be like a thousand dollars there of course is a 20 percent fee added for additional pets and pricing of course varies especially if you're having specific you know really detailed requests or you have complex backgrounds so on and so forth um something else that i absolutely love that um shannon's has is that you can purchase printed copies of portraits that she's um done on her free time so she and she also has digital watercolor portraits that she creates those prices start at $28 for an 8x10 on matte paper, and they can go up to $294 for a 24x36 on one and a half inch canvas. Uh, once again, I'm going to stress that these, these lower prices are not for your custom hand-drawn portraits for, of your fur baby. So don't go to Shannon thinking that you're going to have her create this masterpiece for you for $28. On eight by ten. No, those are the ones that she's already done. She does in her free time because she loves to draw. <laughs> um, so I just want to stress that she makes greeting cards and Pokemon cards and cartoon portraits, memorial cards, coloring pages, and more. I want you guys to visit um, her site, roughsketchings.com. R U F F sketchings.com. You can find her on Instagram, Facebook, and other social media sites at rough sketchings. R U F F sketchings beautiful work get ready to you know to smile but also shed some some tears um because <laughs> it's beautiful work absolutely beautiful now last but not least i want to shout out um naya powell she um she was featured in cnbc's women rising africa series alongside the president of tanzania and the president of ethiopia and and other women and she's the founder and CEO of Utopia Spa and Global Wellness, which um, those of you in Atlanta, you remember when um, she started off with Spa Utopia. Well, she has grown and evolved and is absolutely beautiful and brilliant. She and her team have developed a platform that provides virtual, live, and on-demand multicultural wellness experiences and international luxury re retreats. Awesome. This October, Naya will be bringing women um, from the U.S., entrepreneurs and executives. They'll be going to Senegal and the Gambia for the upcoming Utopia Retreat. It's awesome. This event is curated um, to promote self-care and cultural enrichment around the African diaspora. Um, they're exploring investment opportunities, women's empowerment, and social impact. And she's they're doing this in collaboration with um, Gambia-based nonprofit, The Woman Boss, and CEO um, Awamari Lo Khan. It's, I love what they're doing. And Naya and her team have revolutionized wellness across five continents. Yes, they are a 2021 Google for Startups Black Founder um, Fund recipient. And if you didn't know, Naya is also a number one best-selling wellness author, thanks to her book, 30 Days to Utopia Living, that so many of you purchased. If you have not purchased her book, um, check it out. 30 Days to Utopia Living by Naya Powell. Now, now, Naya and I, we met more than 10, 11 years ago uh, when I served on the board of directors for the Younger Women's Task Force Atlanta Metro chapter. And she's just a, a ray of light. She reflects it. It comes through her eyes, her smile, her essence, her being, her presence. She's just absolutely um, beautiful inside and out. So you can follow them at Utopia SGW on Instagram. You can follow her on Instagram at Utopia Living dot with dot Naya. She's on LinkedIn. So you can find her at Naya Fila Powell. Check out their apparel collection. They have uh, free self-care guides. Visit utopialivingretreats.com. And um, if, if those of you that want to start typing on the phone to give them a call, yeah, dial 1-844-SPA-UTOP. That's 1-844-772-8888. <clears throat> Excuse me. Visit their website. Um, their other website they have is utopiasgw.com. 
and explore their memberships and their workshops um, and their classes. I want to make sure I said again on Instagram, Utopia SGW, and um, you can find Naya at Utopia Living dot with dot Naya on Instagram. Yes, I just, oh, these are amazing companies. I hope you guys are supporting them fully. Um, show some love, please, 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 please. So, uh oh, there we go. Wow, that's zoom by. It's that time again. You guys know what that music is. It's time to wrap up and go our separate ways until next week. If you have questions or suggestions about this show, please email them to us at don't call it small biz with a Z at gmail.com. I have a quote that I want to share. It is a Brene Brown quote, and it um, says, vulnerability is based on mutuality and requires boundaries and trust. It's not oversharing. It's not purging. It's not indiscriminate disclosure, and it's not celebrity style social media information dumps. Vulnerability is about sharing our feelings and our experiences with people who have earned the right to hear them. Thank you, Brene Brown. This only underlines, highlights, and magnifies exactly what has been shared, that when you overshare, that's not vulnerability, folks. It's not. You're just dumping. So (laughs) I hope that you got a lot of value from this. Please share this episode with anyone and everyone. I appreciate all of you for your love and support so very much. Thank you. With that, be sure to check us out on Facebook at Foreman and Associates and on Instagram and Twitter at Foreman LLC. Our podcast Twitter handle is It Ain't Small and our Instagram is Don't Call It Small. Be sure to also follow us and share us with your friends, colleagues, and family. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Natasha L. Foreman. Reach out to me. Say hello. Share your story. I look forward to meeting you. I want to make sure that I give proper credit for our show theme song. It's called Higher Up and it's by Shane Ivers. Thank you for tuning in to the Don't Call It Small Business Podcast. For sharing these episodes with others and for your continued support. And don't forget what I tell you on each and every episode. Don't call what you're planning, thinking, dreaming, or doing little or small. Go big, go bold, or go nowhere. I'll see you here next week. Make today a super awesome day. Take care. With that, be sure to check us out on Facebook at Foreman and Associates and on Instagram and Twitter at Foreman LLC. Our podcast Twitter handle is It Ain't Small and our Instagram is Don't Call It Small. Be sure to also follow us and share us with your friends, colleagues, and family. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Natasha L. Foreman. Reach out to me, say hello, share your story. I look forward to meeting you. I want to make sure that I give proper credit for our show theme song. It's called Higher Up and it's by Shane Ivers. Thank you for tuning in to the Don't Call It Small business podcast. For sharing these episodes with others and for your continued support. And don't forget what I tell you on each and every episode. Don't call what you're planning, thinking, dreaming, or doing little or small, go big, go bold, or go nowhere. I'll see you here next week. Make today a super awesome day. Take care.